Hey guys, AJ here. Now that she's getting her very own banner, the question is, is it a good idea to get Keqing constellations? And to answer that question, we're going to take a look at each of her constellations and find out exactly by how much they actually improve her performance. I won't talk much about whether you should pull for the base unit if you don't have her yet, because there's not much to say about that. If you like her design and playstyle, then I think that's enough reason to pull for her, but that's just my opinion. Don't let the fact that she's Electro get you down, there's no content in the game she cannot clear, and at the end of the day, following the meta is not as important as enjoying the game. The only thing you should keep in mind is that she's not a limited character and that theoretically you can always get her randomly when losing your 50-50s on other limited banners in the future. Constellations though are a whole different subject so let's get right into those. C1. Casting her teleport causes Keqing to deal 50% of her attack as AoE electro damage at the start point and terminus of her blink. So you can deal up to two additional instances of damage when you do your teleport slash by pressing E twice. Visually, those are represented by shockwaves, sort of, that are added to the animation of your E ability, one at the starting point of your teleport and another one at your destination. If you're already very close to your target when casting your teleport, it is possible to hit the same enemy with both shockwaves, but from what people with C1 told me, it's not that easy to pull off against smaller enemies and only really consistent against enemies with bigger hitboxes. Both shockwaves each have a multiplier of 50% of your total attack and they can both critically hit. So let's try to find out how much of a total damage increase this actually means for our teleport. At talent level 8, the teleport itself deals 350%. That's including both the initial dagger that you throw out and the slash damage. Which means that depending on whether you hit with only one shockwave or with both, her C1 increases the total damage dealt by your E by either 14 or 28%. One sad thing about this constellation is that it doesn't scale with further investment into your teleport though. At the highest talent level, which is currently 13, the total damage increase her C1 gives you shrinks to 10 to 20%. So the more you upgrade this talent, the more her C1 pales in comparison to the teleport damage. Because this constellation only strengthens her elemental skill, which has a cooldown of almost 8 seconds, how much of a DPS improvement can we then expect in actual combat over an extended period of time? For that, I refer to the sustained electro DPS rotation used by Zanto over in the Kirtzing Mains Discord to calculate DPS values for different weapons. It's a realistic DPS rotation, you're seeing it on screen right now, with a duration of about 12 to 13 seconds that makes use of the entirety of her kit and takes stamina consumption into consideration. If we assume talent levels 10 for her basic attacks, 8 for her E and 8 for her Q, having C1 increases your total damage output for this DPS rotation by 2.5% if you hit with only one shockwave and by 5% if you consistently hit with both. If you're playing a strict physical build, this constellation is absolutely useless because it forces you to do the teleport instead of the charge attack version. If you build her with 4 Thundering Fury, however, you can gain additional value from this constellation because you can cast your teleport every 4 or 5 seconds instead of just once every 8 seconds. C2. Auto attacks on enemies affected by Electro have a 50% chance to produce an elemental particle with a cooldown of 5 seconds. This is basically the Electro Resonance in the shape of a constellation with slightly different triggers and there's no immediately offensive portion to it. Energy is of course important for ultimate uptime and in that sense also not unrelated to maintaining high DPS, but given that there are many other completely free ways to deal with energy problems already, like the Electro Resonance or just some energy recharge that you probably already have at least some of on your gear anyways, this is easily her least impactful constellation. These additional elemental particles will help top off your energy at times and that of your teammates, but it's a pure utility constellation which is something you don't really want to see on a 5 star rarity hyper carry. The only scenario where this could be of higher value is in quick swap comps where every bit of energy helps keep your rotation up, but for every other playstyle where you keep her on the field for longer periods of time, she gets to eat most of the energy particles you generate through combat anyways, and in my opinion her C2 just doesn't do enough for it to deserve a constellation slot. Her C3 adds 3 talent levels to her ultimate. Assuming talent level 8 before getting this constellation, her C3 nets you a total damage increase of 19% on your Q. Over one full DPS window using the 12 second DPS rotation we covered earlier, this constellation will net you a total damage increase of 3.5%. C4. For 10 seconds after triggering an electro related reaction, Keqing's attack is increased by 25%. Now this is an immediate damage buff that is easy to activate, even on the physical build, and easy to maintain since it lasts 10 whole seconds, and because it's an attack buff it boosts all of her damage output regardless of which build you play, so that's pretty good. But how good exactly? 
It's hard to calculate one precise number for the total damage increase because the effectiveness of this 25% attack buff is dependent on your gear and team setup. Generally speaking, the more your artifacts roll into crit rate and crit damage and the less attack percent stats you get from your artifacts and weapon, the more impactful this buff will be. In other words, if you already get a bunch of attack percent from other sources, let's say Alliance Roar or a Summit Shaper, and then a bunch of attack percent rolls on your artifacts, this buff is going to matter much less due to diminishing returns. However, even if you have close to perfect artifacts that roll entirely into crit and you're using a crit weapon, attack buffs are still the most abundant type of offensive buffs in the game. And it is very easy to get a large amount of attack that you may be lacking inherently on your specific unit through external sources. Excluding food, the four most popular sources for attack buffs that I can think of are Bennett, TTDS, the Pyro Resonance, and the Noblesse 4 p set effect. Crit related buffs on the other hand are very rare and much less flexible. So let's take a closer look at how much this buff can do for her. I used my own stats for that here. This is my gear when using the Black Sword with an already relatively desirable stat distribution, plenty of crit rolls and a crit weapon. And if I add a 25% attack buff to these stats, I get a total attack increase and with that a total damage increase of 11.4%. However, if I add a Bennett ultimate to these stats, and mine gives 730 attack without the Noblesse 4 piece, the total damage increase provided by C4 shrinks to just above 8%, and if I were to add Pyro Resonance and the Noblesse 4 piece effect on top of that, it would be just above 7%. Of course, it depends on whether you use any attack buffs at all, and if so, how many of them you stack on top of each other, and maybe you have an entirely different stat distribution on your gear, so it really depends on each individual case, but for the sake of this video let's just say that her C4 increases her total damage output by up to around 10%. Just keep in mind that this value goes down the more attack buffs you stack. C4 is her first constellation that buffs all damage she outputs, and over the full 12 second duration DPS window this constellation does more for her damage than her first three constellations combined. Whether this speaks for her C4 as a constellation with amazing value, or against her C1 to 3 as constellations with tiny value is up to you to decide, but I think it's the latter. Her C5 gives 3 talent levels for her E ability, and just like with her C3, that is also a 19% total damage increase if we assume talent level 8 prior to getting this constellation, and over 1 DPS rotation, this nets you a total damage increase of 3.3%. Now onto the last one, C6. When performing a normal attack, charged attack, elemental skill or elemental burst, Kitchen gains a 6% electro damage bonus for 8 seconds. Effects triggered by normals, charged E's and Q's are considered independent entities. So the way this works is you get a buff whenever you perform one of these four attack types, and buffs for different attack types stack. So you do one normal attack, a timer starts ticking in the background and for the next 8 seconds you will deal 6% more electro damage. That buff duration refreshes whenever you do another normal attack, and the same also goes for the other three attack types. So the idea is you keep rotating through your auto attacks, your E and your Q, to keep refreshing those buffs and to benefit from all four of them at the same time. If you activate all of them, that's a 24% electro damage bonus in total. However, because these buffs last for 8 seconds and your ultimate is on a cooldown of 12 seconds, this one you can only keep up 2 thirds of the time. Buffs for the other three attack types can be easily maintained though, so on average her C6 would give you a 22% electro damage bonus, assuming you play perfectly and don't waste cooldowns. Similar to her C4, the effectiveness of her C6 also depends on how many other damage percent bonuses you already have. Obviously her C6 only really does something on an electro build, and on an electro build you're going to already have at least 46.6% electro damage bonus from your 5 star goblet. If that's all you have, adding to that another 22% from your C6 would give you a total damage increase of 15%. Most likely though, you're going to use either 2 Thundering Fury for another 15, or even 4 Thunder Soother for another 35% damage bonus. And if you use a Refinement 5 Lion's Roar, which gives another 36% damage bonus to boot, you could end up with a whopping 118% damage bonus instead and adding your C6 to that would net you a total damage increase of 10%. This constellation gives you more damage than C4, but it doesn't work on physical damage, so you need to keep your attacks infused with Electro to make use of it. 
to summarize, C1 increases the total damage of your E by 14 to 28%, depending on how many shockwaves you hit with, and over a 12 second DPS window, that's a damage increase of 2.5 to 5% in total. You can gain additional value from this constellation on for Thundering Fury because of the cooldown reduction on your E ability. Sadly though, it doesn't scale with further E investment. It is difficult to land both explosions on the same target and is completely useless for physical builds. C2 gives you a bit more energy and that's it. Pure utility, nice, but I don't think it has a place in here. C3 is a 19% total damage increase on your Q, assuming talent level 8, and over the 12 second DPS window that's a total damage increase of 3.5%. C4 is easy to activate and easy to maintain and gives you a 10% total damage increase on all of your damage. It works for both electro and physical builds, but it's easily inflated due to the abundance of easily accessible attack buffs in the game, giving it the lowest value of all damage related buffs. C5 is a 19% total damage increase on your E, assuming talent level 8 again, and over the DPS window that's a total damage increase of 3.3%. C6 is also easy to activate and rather easy to maintain, and gives you a 10-15% to damage increase on all electro attacks. It doesn't do anything for physical builds though. If we combine all of these constellations on an Electro build, C1 and 5 make our E teleport between 33 and 47% stronger depending on how well we hit with our C1, C3 makes our ultimate 19% stronger, and C4 and 6 together give us an overall damage increase of around 25%. If we then compare the overall damage output over a standard 12 second DPS window between a C0 and a C6, C6 deals about 38% more damage than her C0 counterpart. Now the big question remains, is that worth it? Ultimately that's something you need to decide for yourself, but if you were still on the fence, I hope that these numbers somewhat helped you make a decision. People seem to agree that compared with other 5 stars, Kirching's constellations are underwhelming. Personally, I value the feeling of getting stronger more than just bigger numbers. The most disappointing thing for me about her constellations right now is that her C4 and 6 are no more than just a couple of arrows that move up her skirt. They're just damage buffs and don't add anything to her kit that's unique or fun to play. There are so many things they could have done with her kit without breaking it, but we didn't get any of that. In that sense, I actually like her C1 the most out of all her constellations because it's the only constellation that you can actually see. I myself will likely pull on her banner for Ningguang and Bennett constellations, and if I get her C1 along the way, that's great, but right now I don't have the resources to hit the guaranteed pity, and even though I main her since day one, I will not start buying crystals just to get her constellations, because for me personally they just aren't worth it, much less required in a game that's easy enough to clear as is. Anyway, that is it for this video guys. Let me know what you think about her constellations and whether you're going to pull for her. Thank you as always for watching, I hope it helped and I'll see you in the next one.